Hello everyone. Welcome to our first lesson where we are going to discuss what is Web 1 and what is Web 2. So let's start with the Web 1. In the Web 1, what we have here is our website. Here we have some content. It can be image or something else. And we also have something writing here. So you can see this concept mostly in your professor's website in the college. If you've been to your professor's website, some of them really has a bad UI. So if you go from your mobile phone, they're small, so you have to pinch in and stuff. So that's actually the web bump. So let's look at the characteristics of web bump. Here, we have our website, and this is a static website, meaning we have no dynamic content. The dynamic content that can be changed from the user. So here we have our user, let's call her Jackie. And Jackie is consuming content here. Let's see, consuming content and nothing else. So this works basically like a huge encyclopedia. Jackie can consume the content from the static website here, but that's all she can do. She cannot interact with the website. So here, the information flow is from the website to Jackie. This are information flow. Again, what Jackie is doing is basically she is reading something, so just getting a static content. It's basically like an encyclopedia on the web, and that's Web1. The aim of the Web1 is to put information on the web so that people can see it. Since it's not very doable with books with that range, we were doing it with the web. And to update this website, we have to go there manually and update the code to update the website. And this is the early adoption of web, the first iteration of web, which we call Web1. Now, even though that was really good and people really liked it, we just thought that maybe we can go a little bit further. And then that created the internet that we know of today. So let's check that out. So let's call this part Web2. In this part, again, we have our website. We have our content. Let's say these are images and these are text, or we can say the, these are posts. And we have our menu here with login page, sign up and everything. And here we have Jackie again. She's a little bit taller now since your size passed. And this is our dynamic website. Again, like the time before, here, Jackie is consuming content from the website. Let's say consuming content. But differently, now Jackie is also uploading some content on the website. Let's say uploading content. So here is the idea is we are not only getting information from the website, but we are also dynamically giving information to the website. You can think the social media websites like Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube. What we are doing in Facebook is we are logging in. So we are giving our information to Facebook. Then we upload our profile picture. We put some content on the Facebook so other people can read it. Now, in the second case with the Web2, what we are seeing is we are actually manipulating the content on the website. And also, we are learning from the website at the same time. So here, it's important to look at the information flow. If you remember, here in our previous example, the information flow was from the website to the Jackie. But here with the longer Jackie, our information flow is from the website to Jackie, also from Jackie to website. And that's our information flow. So what we are doing here is we are actually creating a loop. 
We are giving information to the website. We are getting information to the website. Website is learning from us, but at the same time, we are learning from the website. So this here creates a, us a loop. Let's say a loop. And this is the dynamic web, and we know as Web2 today. So the base difference here is that the Web1 is a static website. We can read content from a website, which is Web1, but we cannot interact with it. But with Web2, we have actually dynamic websites that we can interact with it, we can upload content, we can read the content that other people uploaded. So we have a dynamic ecosystem like we have today. And we can call, this is the base difference between Web1 and Web2. So thank you for listening to me on this lesson. And in our next lesson, we are going to look at the good side of the Web2 and the problems that Web2 is bringing to us. Thank you very much. And I will see you on the next one.